This week, I take America's longest train route, get served cold Pizza Hut after they left the chef behind, and tackle an assault course to get into bed, as I travel over 2,000 miles on Amtrak's California Zephyr from Chicago to San Francisco. Welcome to Chicago, home to such greats as Ferris Bueller. The sausage king of Chicago. Yeah, that's me. The McAllisters off of Home Alone. Kevin! And the Blues Brothers. It's 106 miles to Chicago. It's dark and we're wearing sunglasses. They were from here as well, weren't they? But today we're getting out of Chicago and taking a ride on America's longest train journey because today I'm taking the Amtrak California Zephyr all the way across to San Francisco in California. It's three days on a train, so let's get to the train station and get on board. First things first, I had to get to Chicago's Union Station, the starting point for the California Zephyr. We're traveling in Amtrak's first class, which gets us access to the Metropolitan Lounge at the station. Hey, how are you? This is your ticket to get in and out of the lounge. Uh -huh. If you do get out of the lounge, when you come back in, Perfect. Thank, thank you. you. Should we just take these through? Is there a way I take these through with us or do you want them to leave? Yeah, that's fine. Just save them leaving them. Thank you very much. So we are traveling first class today across to San Francisco on the California Zephyr. And we've got a bedroom rather than a room out. We're going to try out their bedrooms today and see just what they are like. Traveling first class gets you access to this lounge here in Chicago Union Station. It's the Metropolitan Lounge. What do you reckon? It's quite nice, lots of comfy areas to sit if you dig them out. It's really busy and crowded downstairs, but up here, nice and quiet, and they've got loads of food and snacks and things available as well. Nice and place to... And there's an elevator to bring you up. And there is, which is nice. Oh, the station is absolutely beautiful, but it is time to say goodbye because our train is now boarding number five all the way to San Francisco. Are you ready? Yes. Let's do this. Despite the main station building being really fancy, the area the trains go from is more like Birmingham New Street Station than a fancy neoclassical building, but that didn't matter too much as we were soon getting on our train across the country. So on board the Amtrak California Zephyr all the way down to California today. This is the first class bedroom. We're going to have a look around that once we actually pull out of the station. In the meantime, we're just still sat here in Chicago Union Station. Is it just me? Train stations in America, they look absolutely beautiful and stunning when you arrive at street level and walk through the great concourses with all the architecture and everything. And then you get down to the train and it's like, you're in the metro it's um not not the nicest anyway it doesn't matter because pretty soon fingers crossed we'll be leaving chicago behind and heading out west across this big big country that we're in and in fact pretty soon after that we were departing chicago for our train across america the california zephyr heads west out of chicago crossing the plains of iowa and kansas into colorado it arrives into denver on the second morning before crossing the rocky mountains into utah from there it crosses Nevada overnight and on the last morning crosses the Sierra Nevada, cruising across Northern California into Emeryville just outside of San Francisco. The Zephyr is the longest train journey in America under one name, however there is a train called the Texas Eagle that goes from Chicago to San Antonio in Texas where part of it joins with the Sunset Limited train to go towards California. Now technically I think that's classed as two trains with a connection halfway through but what do I know? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Alright then time to do a quick room tour of our room here on the Amtrak California Zephyr. So we are in a first class bedroom today. There's three different types of rooms that you can have here if you want a sleeper bed. Normally we've stayed in the couchette rooms before I and mean, that's effectively a bunk bed in a closet in a place like a cupboard at the side of the train and there's like two bunk beds in it. This is a bit more luxurious than that, although it's still Amtrak, so it's still not exactly Orient Express type rooms. We'll leave that up to Trek Trendy. A seat there facing backwards. And then this seat here that kind of flat lays out into a bed. And then there's a bunk bed that comes down as well. So one of us will be on each one. I will presumably take the top one and Rachel will stay down there. They've done these up quite nicely because last time we stayed on the Amtrak and we took a ride on the Amtrak, then it was just like this horrible blue nylon-y material. And they've put this beautiful leather. It's like Delta Airlines leather. This is quite nice. And the seats, as you can see, sort of pull out. Nice bedding and things as well, I think. Um, they've upgraded them. Nice pillows at least. Controls here for the air conditioning. The reading light there and a two-pin plug there. Closet just here. Within that, we've got coats. Not much room for anything else, unfortunately. And then at this other end of the bed, we've got a um, reading light here. 
volume, looking a little bit grotty and grubby. Call button for the attendant and the lighting controls here, which put it into like a nightlight mode. Down here we've got a table. There's two bottles of water that have come in the room and the table pops out like so and folds out either way. You've got a choice of meals. You can either have them in your room here on the train or you can go down to the dining car. Then we've got more storage up here. So we'll just put one of our trolley cases here. This is the only thing. There's not much room for trolley cases. One of them is under there. One of them's up here. Not really much room. Over here, we've got a wash basin. Right, just here. So you've got a sink, hand soap, tissues, toweling, dog roll, cups and things like that. And here we've got trash. And then you've got the bathroom which is I can open that not very big but we've got toilet the shower tray just here and then there is a shower so we actually have a shower on board the train which is quite nice won't lie it's not the biggest bathroom that there are um, apparently there's a slightly larger shower downstairs but that means sharing a shower with other people so we'll perhaps just use this one so as we cross the farmland of western illinois they just come on and told us that we've got no food on the train tonight. Yay! Because apparently the chef hasn't turned up. They booked him for the wrong day, apparently. So uh, we have no dining car tonight. We normally get our meals every night. They're trying to figure out what we're going to have for tea tonight. We've got the snacks, though. We did stock up on snacks in okay. Chicago, didn't we? So we've got snacks, we've got trail mix and pretzels. It's almost like we knew, but we didn't. But he said that the um, dining car will be open tomorrow from six in the morning for breakfast and then obviously for the rest of the trip. But for today, well, I think somebody, I think the driver's going out to do a McDonald's run or something whenever we get to, wherever we get to. Now, the problem with train journeys in America is that there aren't exactly a lot of dining options in between the big cities. Once we left Chicago, it was almost 24 hours before we'd be in a similar sized city when we arrived into Denver. Between the two, it's pretty much just farmland and small towns from time to time, which poses a bit of a challenge when they're trying to source food for a train full of passengers. After a few hours, though, we crossed the Mississippi River into the second state on our great journey, Iowa. All right, so we've just crossed the mighty Mississippi River into... All right, we've just crossed the mighty Mississippi River into... We're done. All right, we have just crossed the mighty Mississippi River into Burlington, Iowa. State number 41 for me. What state number is it for you, Rach? Not anywhere near that. We're here now for about another sort of five or six hours, I think, and the entire width or the entire length of Iowa across towards Nebraska. We still don't know what we're having for tea, do we? I saw a, saw a load, load, a load of Pizza Hut boxes on in Galesburg, which was one of the last stops we did, but nobody's told us what we're doing, if we're get, even getting fed or not. Maybe that was just for the staff, I don't know. <laughs> They're all right. <laughs> sort us out later. But it's now um, sort of six o'clock in the evening, um, so I'm curious as to if we're actually going to get fed tonight or not. We might just be breaking out the snacks. But anyway, oh, we're pulling off from Burlington. As the evening turned into nightfall, we still had no idea what we'd be getting for dinner, but eventually, after another hour, an announcement was made. All right, they've just called up on the tunnel here and asked everybody in the sleeping cars to go down to the dining car, so we're off to try and get some dinner. Let's see what delights DoorDash has cooked up for us tonight. Come down to the buffet car. It was like it's going to be a posh affair. No, what we've got. Down. All right, so dinner has been served. It's Pizza Hut. They've had Pizza Hut delivered to the train. Thank you. Oh, you've got a salad with yours. Yeah, I do. I asked for salad. So how's your pizza? Cold. Cold pizza. So it's not just pizza. It's cold pizza. Lovely. After eating our meagre rations of pizza that was somehow both burnt and cold at the same time, we grabbed a glass of wine and headed back to the room. Hey, we're back. <laughs> we're back. We fell back into the room, didn't we? Hey. Your was, clean hoodie. That's now coated. I'm now coated in wine. I brought. We've brought the wine back to the room. Uh, yeah. Because it was just pizza. <sighs> pizza. How was your pizza hut, Rach? Uh, cold. Cold. Burnt. Tastes like cardboard. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so dinner, that was dinner, shocking. Amtrak dinner. I mean, first honestly, class. first class dinner. Honestly, we've Do got better. three. We've got three nights on this train. Okay, for us, it's not so much of an issue. We'll get a nice dinner tomorrow night when they've might hopefully got a flipping hope so somebody to join the train in Denver or somewhere to give us dinner tomorrow night. The couple opposite is they're on a bloody anniversary trip. To go and see their kids in Colorado, and they said they'd do the train so they could have a nice meal on the train and enjoy a um, enjoy a nice sort of relaxed relaxed evening, a nice formal dinner, and they got given Pizza Hut, and that while being thrown around while on being the thrown around I on mean, the tracks, which isn't geez, their fault. But geez, Louise, have they, have they put the foot down or something? I think he's put his foot down because we're running late. So we've had his pizza, what haven't we? <laughs> Don't Tomorrow, be, be truthful. I had a salad. Two wings, because that's all I could have, and some pizza. And that, yeah, they've that only got a certain dinner. amount of wings. We can only have a ration of two wings per person, and two slices of pizza per person. And if you were vegetarian, well, we we're only allowed eight vegetarians because they've only got 16 slices of vegetarian pizza. So, um, yeah. Um, we are told that the dining car will be open for breakfast in the morning, so maybe it's sausage and egg McMuffins. <gasps> Um, anyway, so we've had pizza up for tea, maybe McDonald's for breakfast, if they haven't oh, got a yeah. chef in time, who knows, maybe maybe tomorrow night we'll get Burger King or Taco Bell, you never know. <sighs> we've got wine, at least we've got wine. So we're going to drink our wine in our car and um, <laughs> as we cross Iowa and get thrown around the railways of Iowa and um, yeah, enjoy our I evening on the um, shop. <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe so. Who knows? The night is but you. It's time to put the bed up. And am I having the top bunk, Rach? You are. So you're having the bottom bunk and I'm I having am. the top one. Yep. Okay. Now we're going to do this then. Well, I've already pulled it down. I'm going to set the ladder up. This is how the pros do it. You know, every time I do a train video and I make a bed up, I say Rach will be proud of me because I've managed to make a bed. But now you're going to help me. Because I bet every time you get someone else to do it. No, I do it on my own. Right. I have a ladder. Where does this go? Just watch my ammo. And watch your boobs. What are you doing that for? Lift oh, mine's already folded. done. Lift it down folded. Hang on. Bloody hell, man. And then what you need is... Blame it out. All right, let's just stop me falling out of bed. Yeah, take your pillows. Hang on. So you read to this end, it would seem. I want to look out the window. But it would seem you're into the sand. So there's my pillars, right? Yeah. And that's it. And what about my duvet? What duvet? Oh, I need something to pull over me. Oh, your blanket. My blanket and blanket. stuff. And these are quite nice, aren't they? I am track. There we no. go. That'll do. No, 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 it's not right. Do you need Move to... Move the camera. There we go. Like you've not unfolded it. There you go. Now it's unfolded. There we go. Look at that look. Right, I'm off to bed. Go oh, oh. Don't tell me yours now. No, you're fine. I can do it. So I'm up here. This is my bed. Rach, look at the size of the bed that Rach gets under here. <laughs> this is like a double bed. How come you got that bed? Because I've got a fat ass and I need the bed. Well, can't I have that bed? Can't you go on the top one? No. Can we share? No. Oh, go on. No. Looks like I'm up here then, in the army bed for tonight. Oh, God. How are we going to do this? Ow! Yay, yay, yay. Right. <laughs> I'm in bed. Well, I will be in a minute. It's not the most comfortable. And while we're wildly swinging from side to side, I don't know whether I'm going to get a good night's sleep at all. There's only one plug socket working in this entire room which is down there, so we're having to sort of double up, aren't we, Rach? Yeah. Oui. yeah. <laughs> I'm having to double up. I'm going to try Ooh. and get some sleep. Are you all right down there, Rach? Yep. Are you comfy? Yeah. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you in the morning. Good night. I woke up the following morning as we were pulling into Denver's Union Station in Colorado, where we heard some good news. Apparently we've got a chef today. Here in Denver, I've just woken up. So we're gonna go try and get some breakfast. 
There's quite a few choices to have for breakfast on the Amtrak, but I went for the French toast, and I have to say it was really delicious. We're pulling out of Denver now. The next bit of the trip apparently is the most scenic part of this trip because we are now going to head out west from Denver across the Rocky Mountains into Utah where we're going to see even more amazing scenery as we cross Utah as well. So really looking forward to this bit of the journey now. Man, this scenery is absolutely incredible. Wow. And as it turned out, the fantastic scenery was only just beginning. The ride west from Denver is incredible as the landscape turns more mountainous the further west you go. We climbed higher and higher before reaching the station of Winter Park, Colorado. All right, welcome to Winter Park, Colorado. This is the highest station on the route. It's almost 9,000 feet above sea level, really high up here in the Rocky Mountains. Absolutely stunning. We stopped here for a few minutes for a fresh air break. Pretty soon we were continuing our journey and the scenery just got even more incredible the further along we went. Isn't this absolutely incredible? This is called the Upper Gore Canyon and it's the a spot of the route that you can only see from the train. There's no roads or any way of getting here apart from by the train and it is just stunning. Isn't that incredible? Wow. All right, we've come down for lunch on day two. Yes. Apparently they've just announced that we are literally at the halfway point, 1,200 miles from Chicago. So we're at the halfway point to Emeryville now. 1,200 miles down, 1,200 to go. Look at the scenery out there. It's beautiful. What are we going for for lunch, Rich? Um, the loaded baked potato. Sounds good, that's what I've gone for as well. Sounds quite nice. We continued westward bound towards the next station stop of Glenwood Springs, Colorado. In this part of the world, you really do get a feeling that you're going somewhere as you pass through remote gorges and tiny towns that don't seem to have changed much since the days of the Wild West. All right, welcome to Glenwood Springs, Colorado. 6,000 feet up. We've come down a little bit from before. Very beautiful approach into here though, through the side, we went alongside the Colorado River. Really, really pretty. We've got another fresh air break here. And then next, we're getting back on board for the next stop of Grand Junction, Colorado, which is further west towards Utah. Just outside of Glenwood Springs, we pulled into a siding and waited for the opposite direction California Zephyr to pass us on their way to Chicago. Like most long distance Amtrak trains, aside from the restaurant car, there's an observation car with huge full height windows. I do have to say though, being in an upstairs room, the view is pretty much identical, just with the benefit of being in your own room. Downstairs in the observation cars, there's a buffet car selling hot food, drinks and snacks. Now I did find it funny during this trip that the buffet car only closes for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Like, isn't that the time that people actually want to eat? Anyway, in each wagon there's also hot and cold water and coffee available too. After some time, we pulled into the last station in Colorado, Grand Junction, which is a really beautiful station, albeit a little bit run down these days. All right then, welcome to Grand Junction, Colorado. It's a lot warmer here, actually. This is the furthest westerly point in Colorado. We're about to pop over the border into Utah. This is Grand Junction. It's a very grand junction and very nice and warm as well. Let's get back on the train and head across the border into Utah. Once we left Colorado, the scenery turned from beautiful mountain gorges to rocky desert outcrops. I have to say, I do find there's something incredibly beautiful about the red desert with the red rocks sticking up. It's just a stunning part of America. As we crossed Utah, it was soon time for dinner, and as we'd actually got a chef tonight, I went for my favourite, the Amtrak Signature Steak. It did taste absolutely amazing with a glass of red wine as we watched the sun setting over the Utah desert. The next day, we woke up to a beautiful sunrise in the middle of the Nevada desert. Well, good morning. We are about 25 minutes outside of Reno, Nevada. We've spent the night cruising across the, uh, the deserts of Utah. 
and Nevada and we're now about 25 minutes from Reno, Nevada and we've decided to be lazy this morning and have our breakfast delivered to the room. You can do that, you just need to speak to the car attendant and they'll go and get your breakfast for you and bring it back to you. It's quite handy, isn't it? It is. I need to start eating mine. Let's get some breakfast eaten. And then tonight at 4.30, I think, we arrive into the bright lights of Emeryville, California, just outside of San Francisco. Now, I've never been to Reno before, but it seems like a slightly seedier version of Las Vegas. As you pull in, you pass casinos, adult stores, mortuaries and pet playhouses, whatever they are, before arriving into the slightly grim train station. All right, now this is Reno, Nevada. Party city of, of sorts, a bit like Las Vegas. I'm not gonna lie, not quite as pretty and beautiful as some of the other stations we've stopped at, but anyway, it's fresh air and it's cold. It's flipping cold here in Reno, but never mind. Let's get back on the train one more and move into California. All right, so we've just officially crossed over the state line. We're now in California, climbing up into the Sierra Nevada to our next stop of Truckee. And just when I thought the Rocky Mountains had been the scenic highlight of this trip, the California Zephyr had one more wild card up her sleeve as we climbed up into the Sierra Nevada and through the Tahoe National wow, Forest. I thought that the Rockies would be the highlight of this journey, but this is just something else. Incredible. Now, I've never been to this part of California before, but after going through on the train, I've now added a new bucket list destination in the United States. As you crawl through the tree-lined mountains, you pass beautiful valleys filled with fog and low clouds that just seem to hang in the air, making the whole area feel like you're in a Disney movie. All right, then we are on the last leg. We've just left Sacramento in California, heading down to San Francisco. Nearly there. We are nearly there. Three days, nearly. Actually, it's more than it is. There is three days. Exactly three days on a train. How are you feeling? It's definitely even some beautiful sights that we've seen out the window, and it's been really cool to spend this time with you. It's been oh, that's nice. Thank you. It's been nice but I, I am time ready to well. get back onto solid ground. It will be nice, actually. I think. Do you think we're going to sleep on a right in this steady bed tonight? <laughs> We just feel like we did when we come off the cruise and it's just rocking constantly. Probably. The last part of the California Zephyr takes you through California's wine country, stopping at Sacramento before dropping down into the San Francisco Bay Area. Eventually we got our first glimpse of the San Francisco Bay as we followed its eastern coastline all the way down to the city of Emeryville. Now San Francisco doesn't have a downtown Amtrak station so you either have to get off in Emeryville or Oakland slightly further down the line depending on which train you catch. At both stations you can get on the Coast Starlight which is a train that we've done before and that takes you from LA the length of the west coast all the way up to Seattle, Washington. But for us, Emeryville was the end of the line, and in somewhat of a rare occasion based on our previous experiences, we actually arrived early. Hey mate, is the band going to be here or they need to go in the kitchen? Yeah, this way they will see you in the other side. Thank you. All right then, welcome to Emeryville, California. A stone's throw from San Francisco, because San Francisco doesn't have any long distance trains. So now we've got to get an Uber into San Fran. Okay. You're, glad, you're glad we're off the train at last? Yes. 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 Right, let's go and get an Uber. From Emeryville, it took us about 30 minutes in traffic to cross the bay into San Francisco and get to our hotel right near San Francisco Airport. All right, then welcome to San Francisco. We made it. We did. Survived. This is the Double Tree Hotel. Oh, an actual bed rage. <laughs> this is my side. Oh, that's nice. And she said we've been upgraded to a view. Oh, look. Yes, we have a Oh, look, there's a view of the planes landing. There's two landing together. Look, right, we've got. Oh. You can't quite see that. There's two planes landing in formation. There's two taking off in formation over there. Look at that. Oh, okay. Fantastic. This is a this is a nice view. That is pretty cool. That is. Anyway, we've survived the Amtrak, the California Zephyr, Pizza Hut, and 
dodgy beds and more, but it's been fun, hasn't it? We've had a fun time. It's been, it's been nice. Um, but um, let us know what you thought to the California Zephyr down in the comments. And if you want to see us take any more Amtrak trains, let us know. Um, I, I'll put a link on the screen to my train, American Amtrak train playlist. And you can see the other trips that we've done on the Amtrak over here. And we are always willing to do more and see more of this amazing country. We are. And if you just want to see Noel torture himself on things as well, feel free to comment those that below down well. there. Look how she's running. She's like, I'll oh, fast forward. Really? I've got a video. That, hang on. Where... You're going to miss her. I'm going to miss her. Where is oh, she? No. Where is she? She stopped. She stopped. Oh, she stopped. Oh, no. That was funny. That was funny. She's out of breath now. Look. No, she's just wobbling her hips now. Look. Shake that booty. Anyway, enough of that. Right. So, yes, let, let us know what you'd like to, to, um, to film next. And in, me, in the meantime, we are off to grab some dinner, get a good night's sleep, maybe watch a movie on this massive TV, eh, Rach? That might be nice. That'd be nice. Um, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. Bye for now.